what was life like for you, you know, as a child and, and going through um, high school, you know, were there, what were some of your hobbies, interests? What was, what was yeah. life like for you? Well, first of all, I would say when you unlock the uh, secret to really consistent income in this business and, and not having any worries, let me know. Cause I'd like to know how to do that. You know, I, we've all gotten better at it, but we're all, um, no matter how long you're in it, you're the business is what it is. There's going to be yeah. ups and downs. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, going, going back to, uh, I grew up in Sugar Creek, Ohio. I don't know if I actually grew up in Baltic, Ohio, which is a town of about 500 people moved to Sugar Creek, the big town of 2000 people. And, um, yeah, I, I don't know if you know where that is. Is that up by, um, um, like Worcester and all that, like that direction close. Yeah. Um, okay. see, this is what always happens is I start out Baltic then I go sugar Creek and there, then someone's like, okay, what's the next biggest town? So the next would be like Coshocton, New Philadelphia, okay. Um, okay. Worcester in, in that area, Holmes County area. Yeah. Um, little, little different than Columbus for sure. Um, I grew up in a very traditional family. My, uh, traditional in the sense that my parents got married young. They stayed married until actually my, my mom passed away about five, five years ago. Um, almost to the day, uh, they had just celebrate, we're about to celebrate their 55th wedding anniversary. Mm. So mm. that's kind of, uh, that was the norm in my, my family, which isn't really the norm anymore, I guess. Yeah. Um, Grew up, so, you know, real small town, uh, real small high school. I graduated from Garraway High School, had 54 people in my graduating class. Um, loved it. It was a great place to grow up, but I knew with some certainty pretty early on that that's not where I was going to live the rest of my yeah. life. Um, so, yeah, yeah, my dad actually was... Um, I, he probably won't watch this, so I can talk about him. He he was actually <laughs> Amish when he was uh, when he was growing up, and had kind of I don't know if you know anything about the Amish, but his my grandparents leased their farm to an Englishman, which if you're not Amish, you're English, and they got the whole family got shunned at that point. So there's some animosity there. Sure, sure, <laughs> but um, but yeah. And my mom grew up really, really poor, uh, came from like, a. there were six people living in a one bedroom shack basically. Um, mm. yeah. So I, um, modest, humble, humble background for the family for sure. And, yeah, um, no, I, I was, I'm such a nerd. I had to pull it up on my, my Google maps to where I could see where, uh, Baltic Ohio was. So <laughs> My dad was the mayor of Baltic, Ohio for a while when I was younger. So I was like, thought I was king shit. <laughs> Am I allowed to and, you know, say stuff like that? <laughs> hey, this, okay. this is your this is your show. We can say whatever we want. <laughs> yeah. But, and I, I say that to, um, just to kind of let you know that it's been instilled uh, with, with them growing up poor. They, they work their butts off to provide for my sister and myself. And, um, you know, my dad was, he was a truck driver and worked 60, 70, sometimes 80 hours a week. Um, it wasn't uncommon for him to get up at two o'clock in the morning, drive to work, go drive truck all day and not get home till six or eight o'clock the next night. Uh -huh. And um, he'd still, if he could make it to a little league game, he'd be there. I don't know how he did it, you know, he was yeah. probably sleeping sometimes four hours a night. Um, and like I said, worked his butt off. My mom was always working. She <clears throat> she babysat kids when she was younger. Everyone around Sugar Creek knew her as Grandma Mary. Um, <laughs> so uh, I think some of that work ethic has been instilled in me. Um, but it was also a motivation for me to look for a different path. Because sure. I didn't want to be working 70 and 80 hours a week. 
like my dad did. I, I respect it. And, um, you know, it was a different time. I'm almost 50. So, uh, you know, that that's just the way things were. The guy went and worked and, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I respect it, but that wasn't going to be my life. And that's, um, ultimately kind of what led me to, to real estate, but although there is a, a winding path to get there. <laughs> yeah. So let's, let's dive in, you know, small town, right. You know, mm -hmm. I was kind of the, the same. I, I grew up in a small town, but then my high school years, I went to a bigger school uh, and then I came down to Ohio state and I was like, I'm never going back. Right. So, um, <laughs> What, what was that next step for you right after high school? Cause you kind of, you said you knew early on that, you know, I needed to get out, right. I needed to, to find a different, a different path. What was that next step for you? Did you end up going to college, get into I the did. work field? So I went to, um, uh, you know, stepped up, like I said, I went from Baltic 500 to Sugar Creek, 2000 people. Then I went to Bluffton college, Bluffton university now up near Lima Finley. And Bluffton's a town of maybe 4,000 people. So baby steps up. Um, but the, it was still a very small, very small college, but big to me, right? Sure, sure. Um, I got to interact with some, uh, some folks that didn't look like me. You know, I was, um, this is, this is part of, part of why I, wanted to get away was just the the lack of diversity. Um, mm -hmm. So I get to meet some international students that had a big effect on, on my life. Um, not, not necessarily towards real estate, just opening. Sure. Life. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a great experience there. Um, another thing that pushed me away from manual labor was as I was going to college, I worked at a brick factory back in Sugar Creek in the summers and just worked I, I, like, yeah, it's what kept me in school and kept me from wanting yeah. to do the factory thing. It was, it, yeah. <laughs> no, so. I, I, I totally get it, right? Like sometimes it's just we need that one little extra push, right? Like this isn't this isn't for me, right? This isn't. I was just joking. Sure. I just got done doing um, opening up our first Airbnb down in Texas, and we had to furnish it because it was a brand new build. And you know, I was like, man, there's a reason why I work in an office. And there's a reason why I don't do manual labor anymore, you yep. know, just yep. sweating bullets outside. Right. Like, man, like, yeah, I totally get it. <laughs> I am. I'm in no way afraid of hard work, but sure. um, it's not how I want to live my life. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, not that kind of hard work. Real estate yeah. is hard. It's a, yeah. but it's a different kind of hard. Um, For sure. So, yeah, I, I, I went there. I didn't have any real direction. You know, I thought I was going to be a teacher and then it's like, no, I don't want to be a teacher. And, um, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew what I didn't want to do at that point mm -hmm. in life. And that, that kind of pushed through till I was about 35 years old <laughs> when I finally figured out real estate was my thing. Um, I did a, a number of sales jobs uh, after college I was a communication major, which to me, and you know, when I was in school, I was like, this is great. I'm going to be qualified for so much. And then I got out and I'm like, I'm not qualified for anything. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I, I took some sales jobs, um, selling like nuts and bolts and power tools and all sorts of stuff to construction industry and to, um, large factories like <clears throat> at that time i was selling to uh was meritor automotive which was a heavy truck axle thing they don't even yeah. exist anymore but, 